Oh, yeah, we are back, <sighs> Day 9. I know, stop drooling all over yourself because oh we got an exciting matchup coming at you right now. It is going to be FXO <laughs> Chef taking on MMA from Slayers. Oh, yeah, this will be a good one. Let me let me create a farcical tale of what happened right before we went Do live. It. I was drinking water, and MMA joined the game, and my hand involuntarily clenched and splashed water all over my face. I was so excited because MMA, an extremely, extremely strong Terran player from Team Slayers, always seems to get the win in the team leagues in Korea when his team needs it most. Going up against one of the ace players from FXO Chef, known as the friendliest player on the planet Earth. Totally, totally manner. This guy defines manner, and he's been having a marvelous, marvelous display here. We are going to get started here very, very soon. It sounds like uh, both players readying up here. And again, uh, this is two undefeated players in the pool going head-to-head. -head. So this will be the first loss for one of these guys here. And I love when I see that orange game starting countdown oh, up yes. here on your StarCraft client. Ugh. We're going at it here. Thanks for joining us in the 2011 MLG Pro Circus I Circuit in Columbus. <laughs> it is kind of a circus here. I a little would love bit. it. The Pro Circus, the High bit. Wire actor, FXO Chef. Are there any FXO Chef fans in the audience this evening? Oh, yeah. FXO Chef has a wonderful stream, justin.tv slash FXO Chef, where he regularly shows his own personal ladder games live. People absolutely love tuning in, and he does it nearly daily. And of course, in the top right, if any of you have ever bought a GSL ticket, you know this name. You got any MMA fans out there? I got a clap for both those guys. And you know what? You brought up a phenomenal point yesterday. Day that I want to stress in case anyone didn't hear it. We talked a lot about how many of these players are so good at being able to uh, practice for one specific matchup. It's like, okay, I have to play this player. He's a pro to us. I'm going to practice. I'm going to study, study. But MMA came on and got his breakthrough in the Korean StarCraft League um, leagues by basically eliminating awesome player after awesome uh -huh. player and it was like the guy will just bust down any obstacle that is before him and i do believe that in a tournament like mlg that is going to just be a huge skill that will be very useful to have absolutely i mean you need to have that um i, I would say actually of all players uh, of all the korean players who came out mma is the most attuned to this tightly packed three-day event because in the team leagues it's a similar structure you get thrown into the booth you don't know who your next opponent is going to be it's whoever the opposing team decides is best to kill you so we've seen mma play tournaments where he's had to be against a Terran player, and then a Protoss, and then another Terran, and then a Zerg, constantly switching matchups. Same kind of style of tournament play that we see here today. Now being thrown against the top Zerg player, Chef, who's thrown down a hatch at 15, is now going to throw down a spawning pool. And look at this week. We see a fast tech lab. I'd be delighted to see a Reaper pop out for MMA, as we haven't seen a lot of Reaper plays against a Zerg lately. No, we haven't. The other thing that's going to be very, very telling about this particular matchup and we're going to see how it is going to uh, how it's going to take shape and form day nine is that you know, Shep is the baneless Terran uh, sometimes he will just choose to create these armies that don't have a high baneling concentration uh, I said Terran and I meant Zerg but uh, versus the Terran and um, you know I, I mean against a player like MMA I wonder if that is going to change at all I mean, I definitely think that Chef's Zergling Roach Investor style is going to be best suited to a map like this, a map like Shattered Temple, where there's a lot of wide open mm -hmm. space for good tactical maneuvers. And look at this, we're seeing a second Reaper pop out. Oh my god, the mythic Reaper Bunker Rush. I cannot wait. We rarely ever see Reaper pressure be prominent in this matchup anymore, but it looks like we're going to have a little special oh, treat oh. MMA style. Oh, and the drone is going to meet up. He's going to see that Reaper coming out right away. Drone will manage to get away, but the Reaper will catch up to it thanks to its ability to jump up those cliffs. Oh. Gets on the three, takes out one Zergling. Second Zergling going to go down. The second pair is out. He's immediately going to have to create some more Zerglings to deal with this. I cannot believe that drone managed to stay alive. He's actually just telling the story to his buddy. Can you believe it? Got him out by the skin of my teeth, but the attack is not over yet. We are now seeing Queen pop out. That will be more helpful for dealing with those Reapers, but if those Reapers pop into the main, that could be a little bit of trouble for the Zerg hero FXO Sheth. And in the meantime, we see MMA 
Already starting combat shield, a very interesting transition, and a super fast Roach Warren. We've seen Sheth do this every single time in this matchup. Now, how is Sheth going to deal with this? You've got this little chasm back here that just welcomes Reapers right into your opponent's base. He is going to be on the creep, and he'll have to use his queens to defend this, but he should be able to snipe off some drones. There, he's just going to snipe one off and go ahead and bring it back, trying to minimize the damage that the queen will do. This time, he's going to go all the way around the back, make it much, uh -oh, much uh -oh. more difficult for that queen to get access to these reapers and they could take out quite a few instead he's just gonna kite that queen and if he takes it down not only is that gonna be so bad here but we got things uh -oh, coming uh -oh. out oh and it looks like chef's gonna try to go for the surround can he get it it looks like the queen is at seven hit points oh! and oh chef keeps the queen alive and eight roaches in production. Chef now pulling all of the guys out of gas. What is MMA doing at home? He's building marauders, he's building marines. He will not have stim, he will not have concussive shell. Command center trying to go down. Without that many units, MMA could lose to a potential roach bus, or at the very least, take quite a bit of damage. And he does have links going out now. Gonna regain control of this tower, chase away that SCV so that he will not see it coming. And uh, at the front, we do have a bunker being constructed. The com orbital command is going down, and there's only one Rax with Tech Lab, uh, so we won't have as many Marauders here, but uh, several Marines will be in production. Here come those Roaches. Oh, MMA has to be careful not to get caught off guard, and it looks like he does. He's not looking. He loses two of those Marines. The, those units are the same speed. He needs to make sure he doesn't lose that Marauder. The bunker is starting to load up units. He's going to load that Marauder and get that range seven advantage to try to repel those Roaches as best as he can, and Chef looks like he might try to go for a press. No, he's actually going to pull back, but MMA, I like that he did not overreact in the slightest. Yeah, in fact, Chef decided, okay, cool, I did the damage, I got a couple Marines, I, I chased him back to his base, and I'm going to go ahead and drone up now. He's just going to get that going. He uh, has put his guys back on the gas. Actually, he's just got two on there right now as he's going to continue with more economic production now as he gets his overlords and continues to just drone up like crazy over on MMA's side he is going to be getting stim it's about 60 percent done right now and that starport is on the way very very interesting play from MMA getting these medevacs so quickly it actually looks much more like a Terran versus Protoss style than a Terran versus Zerg style traditionally you see Terran players opt for more tanks early on trying to do very muscular aggressive pushes but MMA is going to get the mobility units the faster Marines the faster Marauders with those medevacs and Chef taking the third but this is a very vulnerable third base no way to join that together with Crete those medevacs are going to be able to pick that off easily yeah, they will. Uh, it, it is kind of a tough decision to have to make there, but with the rocks being up as well, some players just say, well, when you want to take that quick third, you kind of have to go with what is available. Surprise Jeff isn't actually making an attempt to go ahead and take out those rocks, considering these units are idle. But, uh, you know, hiding that third, um, it, it is a little bit tougher for his opponent to get to without him noticing. However, there is the double medevac drop. Uh, dropship setting up and getting ready, going out through the east side of the map. There is an overlord here just above those rocks and he is going to be seen tries to veer out of the way i'm sure he didn't see that he's going to continue on his route down to chef's base chef has not researched zergling speed one of the most essential upgrades in this matchup that could cost him very dearly right here as this huge group of medevacs is now advancing forward it looks like the baneling nest is almost done chef has not prepared for it he actually missed the drop now it's getting unloaded into his main. The Zerglings, the Roaches are heading back and only just now starting Zergling speed. All the drones taking a lot of damage. MMA just ripping through here. Sees that that spawning pool is researching something. Going to begin to stream forward. He stems. He definitely wants to kill it off. Chef cancels at the last second. And with this Roach Ling count, it looks like, oh no, no, Zergling speed means that Chef is going to lose all those Lings MMO. Or MMA in a great position. Yeah, the roaches are the only things left. He tries to bring his drones back in, and this drop is being a crack incredibly effective from MMA. You know, Chef did have vision of it with that Overlord. The placement was good, but unfortunately, MMA was still able to slip that through, and now this main is completely vulnerable. More units coming out, but they are going to fall quickly. And now it's almost free pickets here for MMA as he can choose what he wants to go. A lot of roaches come out. Those units will immediately be picked up and they will evacuate out with their safety.
We're seeing Chef slowly start to recover, but I mean that push from MMA, brilliantly timed and very unusual. Chef clearly was not prepared in the slightest for that sort of timing play. No pool getting rebuilt for Chef. He's trying to recoup his drone count. We have 11 drones in production. The Southern Pool is, uh, excuse me, Southern Expansion is up and running well. And at this point, you're committed to making just roaches. And, oh, getting Baneling speed, but how many Zerglings does he have? He only has four Zerglings, so you can get speed for all four of them uh, if he morphs them into Banelings. But now, at this point in time, you're just so limited as Chef. And what's coming behind this is probably what's the most scary. He needs those Banelings. He needs those Zerglings right now because of very high concentration of Marines here from MMA. And he's going to scan up to the front. He might be able to march right in here, do some critical damage. Roaches are going to move forward. And uh, is he going to, yes, he's going to stim up right there on the end. Sees the Macrash going down. The Roaches are going to move forward. It'll spread out just a little bit. Let these Siege takes do their damage. And there's and a quick the good GG. game. Chef clearly having a little bit of performance issues on the stage. Things like those medevacs flying by the Overlord and just missing them completely, not preparing, forgetting the Zergling speed. Chef doing a little bit of an unusual fast roach play that didn't really pay off. We've seen it kind of struggle in these games, but it can all turn out okay as long as you're playing very, very crisply and your fundamentals don't falter. But Chef really needs to just lock down on that fundamental gameplay if he wants to compete with MMA. Yeah, and as far as MMA, I mean, uh, there's a great great example there of how uh, one can play Terran really phenomenally on that map. Starting off with the double Reaper, he didn't even get that queen at the beginning. Looked like a large victory for Sheth, but it was what was always coming behind it. It's sort of like, I'm going to punch you, and yeah, that hurt, but hey, now here's a kick to the face that comes right after that, and then I'm going to spinning back fist you after that, and it's just like this combo that MMA throws at him continuously. You saw the fact after the medevac dropped it, all of its damage. Then, of course, we just saw the main force move in and finish the game. I mean, MMA, I, I think, is really starting to showcase some different variety. And this always tends to happen in matchups as they get their evolutions where players are dabbling in all different kinds of styles and then all of a sudden one sort of spills out as being very strong and players all gravitate towards that until suddenly one player begins to break out of that shell and then there becomes these new different mixes. That's exactly what happened in Terran vs. Terran. It was all Marine tank and now we're seeing right. Hellion tank really begin yeah. to pop out. So with MMA with that very, very fast uh, medevac play, I think a lot of Terran players are going to start to realize, wow, all my Zerg opponents are delaying layer, delaying the Spire, so maybe I can begin doing these aggressive drops. And they uh, worked out pretty well in that, uh, in that particular instance. MLG Shattered Temple is going to be the map selection from Sheth uh, that will be mm -hmm. picked. And uh, we're going to be hopping right into our next game in just a moment. MMA looking very, very solid there. Uh, Sheth has been looking... Uh, Seth has been looking very, very good, and we are going straight into this game right now with three seconds left on the countdown clock. Um, MMA is looking pretty solid. He might emerge as the undefeated member of this group. That is correct. Both of these players currently undefeated in the group. Neither of them have played against the player who did come in through the open bracket. Right. This is just the original championship pool play. We see Sheth spawning in the right position. Is anyone out there rooting for Sheth to make the comeback? And of course I know that there are now fans of MMA. MMA, the player who came all the way out from Seoul, Korea. Who of you want MMA to close the series out 2-0? There was some hesitation there. No doubt that there's a little bit of love out there for Sheth. And as you mentioned, big member of the community, really doing great with his stream and uh, interacting a lot. If you get a chance to tune in, uh, MMA, of course, you can find him over competing in the GSL as that Slayers team has certainly been impressing the pants off of everyone, uh, both Korean and foreigners alike. Really, really phenomenal players and uh, the Emperor's doing great things over there. So uh, curious to see what MMA is going to come at last time. You were hoping, uh, you know, we even thought for a moment that maybe it's going to be the Bunker and the Reapers coming at it, but uh, he just did the damage with the Reapers. What will he have in store for us now? Well, the barracks is going down and the story will begin to unfold. 
Now, we did see some interesting gameplay from Sho, who did build that second barracks behind this shrubbery here, but it looks like Chef is just trying to scout along the edges, and I disagree with MMA's choice to build the refinery on the inside lip, revealing it to the Overlord. Could have hidden that on this side, but Chef now going to be throwing down the hatchery, and if your opponent does fast gas and you do see a fast factory, the roach opening can be a lot more effective than it was in the last game. And so uh, he does not hide that. He's getting his gas now. The barracks is about ready to complete. We'll have a Marine coming out first. We'll see what happens after that. Overlord's just going to double check things, make sure that it's going as he believes it should be going. And the second Overlord did make its way over there, so he would have seen that eventually. We see a lot of Zergs want to do this in these close by air positions. You can position this Overlord behind the shrubbery, and oftentimes the Terran will never even know that it is there. The first Marine going to move out across the map. He's going to send a second Marine out too, and you can see that he's got a rally directly to the front of his opponent's hatchery. Chef, um, oh my god, Chef forgot a spawning pool. No, nope, there it oh, is. Oh, there's the spawning pool going down. That, oh man. Oh yeah. man, you're gonna want a spawning pool in this matchup. Oof. Well, it uh, did go down. He went, so he went hatch, uh, then extractor, then the spawning pool, and with that, uh, ooh, with the, uh, there the bunker goes down. With the SCV not taking too much damage, he's going to pull a lot of drones here, and he's going to have to, to to block this off. Basically, he did kill or pulled the SCV off, but we do see drones falling left and right. SCV going back to hurt the bunker, and these drones will go for it. Take out the first Marine, going to try to work on the second one, but it does look like the bunker is going to complete. So the question is, is, will that pool get done, and will the links come out to be able to take out those Marines before they get to the bunker? We've now got a second SCV on the way. Two more drones coming out. These drones are going to have to stop him, and he does manage to kill the SCB building that bunker. Oh, Chef, I just I feel terrible for Chef at this point in time. I mean, it's one of those things where occasionally you get so sucked up in the moment. Alright, gotta play really well. Come on, focus, man. Alright, make sure everything's going perfect. You're thinking about scouting into his base with these overlords that something as simple as building your spawning pool ends up getting overlooked, but we're seeing Chef manage to hold the defense properly be able to stay alive. There is now a heli moving down, and it looks like Sheth will be able to block it, but has to be careful not to let that up. The spine crawler now taking a ton of damage. Zergling's now advancing forward, trying to repel. Queen is popping out. Sheth is going to have to try to calm his nerves and play the game that he plays very, very well, straight up macro style TVZ. He's going to have to do exactly that right now as another Hellion makes his way, the same Hellion makes his way, and now he's got the Zerglings. He was able to delay enough for the spine crawler to actually get up, and that will uh, at least make this attack uh, not so much favorable for MMA. He's going to march his Marines back with the Hellion as well, likely to go ahead and repair that. And we see the Banshee in production with two more racks behind it and the command center being built as well. Now having to pool that late and having to deal with that, I mean, look. Looking at the workers, we do see Sheth ahead by two harvesters, uh, but he is kind of behind overall. His speed is going to be finishing up here pretty soon, and it's just going to be another issue of having to deal with this Banshee once it actually popped here from the starport, almost completing, and has rallied directly over to, well, the main this time. Looks like Chef, though, is getting the Evolution Chamber, will be a little bit more prepared. The uh, uh, MMA's Hellion now doing a little bit of damage to the Zergling. It looks like MMA is going to try to pull that back. These Zerglings are going to be happy to see that there's no Expo up yet from MMA. That first Banshee is going to try to make its way into the main. We do see that, oh, there's some damage being taken. And, oh, MMA does manage to pick off one of the Queens with the Banshee. Now at the back of the base, trying to do a little bit of extra damage. It does already have four kills down. But Chef is going to try to stay alive at this point in time. And you know what? Honestly, every single pro I've ever talked to says that they hate the early game stages most. The farther the game goes along, the more comfort they end up having. Because in the early game, there's always that fear of not knowing what's going to be going on. So Chef, if he can hold on and get to the late game, he can end up playing more and more his comfortable style. As if things weren't bad enough, now the Viking comes over, begins to harass the Overlords. The the uh, Banshee is about ready to return. Oh no, off of the creep. The Queen is no way she's going to be 
be able to get back in time. Second queen trying to come up for the save. Banshee will move forward, will take oh. out another queen, and he may just choose to do the damage here, back off, repair back up, and come back in. He is morphing Lair, so he is going to have to make more. Oh, he does save the Banshee. He's going to have to make more queens here. It is natural. He does have one on the way, and that uh, queen did not die, but down to 70 points of health. He is massing some Zerglings over here. We do see the Orbital Command now getting ready to land. The Zerglings will get out of there. And uh, did he come back? Yes, he's repairing both the Viking and the Banshee. Just a great, efficient use of these units. And this is one of those moments where we really see the importance of joining these bases together with creep, the potency of the Banshee because the Queens just cannot get there in time. Now we see a couple of small units moving out in the center for MMA. Uh-oh, there's 18 Zerglings popping out. If they did pop out and MMA was out of position, he could easily lose a lot of those units for nothing. Double Queens here and the main. One of them with 85 points of health. Banshee does want to go back in and see if he can pick off another one. Going to actually go here to the Zerglings. Zerglings that can just kind of start taking those away. They will be running away, but softening all of those up. Now it's going to be Queen versus Banshee yet again. He's going to scoot around the outside, down to 66 points of health, going down, and will be able to take out yet another Queen. Oh. Now he is going to want to repair that Banshee yet again. Behind all this, the tanks, he's now bunkering up at his natural. He has got the Orbital Commanda, um, and uh, you know, starting to get his upgrades there with Stim halfway complete. MMA is just playing this out exactly as he should, patiently building up a big army, continuing to harass, getting all those basic upgrades. I would actually expect MMA to take this third base in this corner very, very quickly. We see the plus two melee upgrade going down for Zerg. Very, very important upgrade in this matchup. Strengthens those Zerglings tremendously. But oh, Chef manages to kill the Banshee. That's going to be a huge mental relief, the fact that he is finally getting a little bit of a leg up. Chef now going to take the gold. The crowd gives a cheer for their favorite Zerg. Well, I think they're giving a cheer for the, the destruction of that Banshee because he was uh, causing absolute chaos here in Sheth's base. Now, while all this is happening, we had the morph up to the lair. We've got the spire up, plus one attack coming, and now five mutas behind it. But a lot of upgrades as well. A lot of gas being spent with Burrow. Also, Baneling speed coming out right now. And at least Sheth has a better concentration of Zerglings than he had last time. He is trying to use them to uh, scout around the map and keep things up. He finds two Marines and walks right into a siege line, taking a little bit of damage there. What will be interesting to me is to find out how effective Sheth is going to be with these Mutalisks. But we've seen from July, even when July was behind, he was able to swing back with amazing Mutalisk control and positioning. And look at this, MMA has no turrets at all. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how it could start, Sean, as we do have the Mutas moving in. He's going to take a shot at the Supply oh, Depot, no. directly in, and he's just going to start doing some damage here. A lot of SCVs going to get taken out here as the Marines trying to get in. He needs to be careful, though, does not even want to move a single amount of Mutas, and even on his exit, he takes some pot shots here. We do see a turret finally going down, but he did manage to kill eight workers in that exchange. MMA now pulling back in a little more defensive. There's the fast early third command center. Does he have Baneling speed? Yes, we do even see the plus two miss, or excuse me, the plus two melee attack almost done. There's the Marine moving in, and Chef so aware of how powerful that counterattack route is. Now the Mutal is heading over to join those Zerglings. He can do a lot of swing in action from that backside, and the gold is up for Chef. He is going to have maximum production, and at this point in time, MMA knows that that backside is going to be left wide open. Zerglings and Mutalist can easily do tons of counters. Yeah, he's going to get a, a bunch of overlords coming out here. More Mutas as well. Right now, the upgrades for the Terran are at plus one weapons with plus one armor on the way. Additional tanks coming out, but as you can see, the Marine count not super duper high here for MMA at all. The Mutas are starting to uh, return back to base and, you know, honestly, his Muta count not extremely high. It is at 12, but they are not together. We do have one Viking starting to beat a way on these mutas and those links are still holding on in the back some burrowed banelings out here the army is just off to the side oh. so he's not going to be able to use it right here but now the stem forward the scan he's got more burrowed banelings right around the middle does he actually see those yes he does in a drop of the gold and it looks like the mutalists are going to try to roll over there no the mule 
Chef losing track of his rally points, just having basic unit disorganization. This big army from MMA now beginning to swing forward. Chef does not look very prepared for this. Oh no, he doesn't have any banelings at all, and it looks like this gold hatchery is going to fall. He reissues the drop, going to bring those banelings back out. Does oh, manage to take no. all those out, but all oh, the mutas are going to capture the tanks from behind, and maybe this will give Chef just enough time. Yes, he's morphing in a lot of banelings, and the bars are going to hit just at a perfect timing. No siege up right here. And he's going to uh -oh, go for uh -oh. this around. And there's the mutilus coming from the backside. MMA caught off guard. The Banelings rip that apart. But the drop in the main MMA uh -oh. opening up a lot more aggressive opportunities. The push at the south side. It looks like Chef will have killed off the main push. But losing the Baneling Nest, Chef having a lot of sloppy problems and in the, the spire. Play. And the spire gets taken down as well. Chef suddenly is going to be unable to deal with any aggression. Yeah, um, I mean, he did manage to take that all out. Zergling's now making its way around the map, uh, is trying to just watch MMA with another drop in the south. It looks like the Mutas are going to go in here, try oh. to do some damage. There's nothing here to help. There was a huge dropship right over there. Mutas go over there, and he's going to try to unload a lot of Marines over off the side. Mutas are going in. Will they be able to take him out? Whoa, no. He's going to have to back off from there. He needs some Banes to take care of this. But it looks like a ton of Zergling's dealing damage at that top side. Here come the Mutas and the Banelings. MMA is going to be out of space. The micro. There goes all of those Marines down. A little bit of sloppiness from both players, but Chef manages to clean up the drop. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Those Banelings. Oh, those are actually Zerglings. Oh, darn. They can't do what Banelings do. Yeah, they can't. And also, MMA being very, very active with his drops. Took out the hatchery that was building. It was not canceled at the gold for Chef. And now he's going after another one. A few links streaming in, but unfortunately, he needs a lot more than that. It'll soften him up with some links and finish him off with the Mutas. Did he rebuild his uh, Spire? The Spire is currently rebuilding right now, so he had to completely stop the Muta production. It looks like the third base from MMA is up and is being handled. The Muta is now going to try to intercept this uh, one medevac. It does not have anything left in it, but Chef trying very, very hard to get that third and fourth base back up. Another drop incoming from MMA, and all Chef wants is to be able to get one good timing shot off with these Banelings. He has a lot of Banelings hotkeyed, pulling back to be able to deal with this drop that's getting unloaded. Now we see all the Mutalists moving out in the center of the map. He's going to try to get everything isolated by those Banelings. In the meantime, it looks like MMA has pulled the drop away, and there are the oh. Mutalists. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Bait them in! Oh! Oh, it looks like it still has the opportunity to do this. MMA does not know that these Banelings are here, and Chef is still playing from uh -oh. way behind. Oh! 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 Huge, huge! In fact, they're not going to be able to clean that up. He will scan just to make sure, but he does stop some aggression for coming out. He wants to find an area to poke and take out those tanks, but he's also not being greedy with those mutilists. Both MMA and Chef playing a remarkable game right now. With all that early game sloppiness, ooh, inches away from spotting that. Chef now going to try to put some pressure on the top left expansion. This is very difficult for Zerg to be able to deal, or excuse me, Terrence to be able to deal with. Zerg can hit from land, air, and all these units have to run these very odd angles to be able to stay alive. But MMA doing a drop at the bottom while prepping a drop at the top. Great splitting going on by MMA. Yeah, that is one of the things that is so impressive about MMA. He is about ready to drop back here. There are some burrowed banelings, uh, but he is going to have to pull all those drones. He is going to take out the hatchery. Meanwhile, in the main, another drop going down here by MMA. There is well one spine crawler. Some links are going to come out, but unfortunately go right past the threat that's inside the base of Chef. Those Marines are going to move forward, and what will they take out this time? They're going to start with the drones, but there's a lot of production stuff that they can also choose from where we see the infestation pit going. And there we are going to see that drop eliminated. But look at how much he lost over here. Oh, in terms of workers killed, oh my gosh. 59 drones have been killed over there by MMA. Doing a remarkable job with all of those drops. Chef now does have that gold up and running. He's getting the pathogen glands. Very uncommon to see a Zerg with this much excess gas at this late stage in the game. Chef just having a little bit of sloppiness in terms of trying to establish 
all of his production centers properly, but he could sprint forward with a bunch of investors, get off that heroic fungal growth play that he's been so effective with. And it looks like, oh, the Burrow Banelings do get spotted by MMA. Yeah, they do go down. And once again, Chef finds himself with a real lack of uh, Banelings in order to deal with this. In fact, there's only a couple here. He's just got a few links. He's going to have a double scan to check out what's going to happen. He splits off this army, goes and attacks that southern base. And he's also going to set up here so that it's going to be almost impossible to defend that gold base. All the Marines will go forward. And if the Mutas were somehow to meet those tanks in the middle, but more Marines is shifting in. And uh, this is not looking good for Chef here. Chef just having a total disorganization, trying to move forward with his Mutalist, but can't quite seem to find enough all in one spot. Now the Broodlings do spawn a couple of Mutalists, a hatch at that just killed expansion at the south end. Some more scans going on. MMA doesn't want to lose more Marines to those Burrow Banelings. The drones are burrowed at the gold expansion. Looks like they will try to sneak out, but no, they will get picked off a little bit more. MMA is going to lose this full medevac. But still, Chef is in an awkward spot yet again. He is, uh, and he's going to go ahead and go for the attack. A lot of investors going to throw out those infested Terrans. If he could get rid of the Marines, he should be able to clean up all those tanks with the munis that he has left. It's going to be more Marines trying to chase in here to help out his, uh, his allies. And what is he going to do? Only left with six mutas now. It doesn't matter. MMA is going to go ahead and march right into his opponent's base. If he's allowed to siege up right here, he's going to lose this and eventually his main. And there it is, the GG. An unbelievable game between these two players. MMA showing his phenomenal drop micro while Chef just kind of giving us a good old Zerg show. Tried to mm -hmm. hold on there, but... Um, couldn't do it. A solid win for Slayer's MMA 2-0. He comes out undefeated with still the open bracket player coming back in. He'll have to play him as well. Now, I think that Chef was not quite able to play his full game. There was a lot of really sloppy mistakes that ended up happening. I mean, the, the first initial forgetting of the pool, cool. I mean, as silly as this might sound to say, that's very easy to happen in an ultra high pressure situation. It is so different playing on the main stage with the huge crowd against the Korean who you have to be playing your absolute A game against with just, you know, a random 1v1 ladder game. So it, once that sort of mistake happened, Chef had a really hard time buckling down calming his nerves and just playing his A game. There was that disorganization between the bases and that strong fundamental gameplay still shown through the good mutilist timing, the counterattacks that were set up. But I do think that Chef could have given MMA a much stronger showing if he just had a little bit more of a relaxed state of mind. Well, and you know what? Regardless, remember that both those players were undefeated in their championship pools. Mm -hmm. Chef certainly has something to be proud of just based off of the record that he's come out of with a pool with a, an amazing amount of players. So MMA, I think that that was kind of to be expected. So yeah. he has reached many of the, or he has reached the level of expectation that many of us had, in, uh, including, you know, people here at the event, those on the interwebs, etc. said MMA, he's always been uh, this sort of legendary player that popped up in the team leagues, mm -hmm. now coming out really performing up to how we expected him to at MLG Columbus. Throwing a ton of units with drops, huge pushes at the front, nonstop aggression. Whatever you thought of the caliber of play was definitely a fun to watch, action-packed game. Heck and yeah. there's still more to come here at MLG Columbus 2011. For now, Wheat and I are going to have to do a little bit of a dinner break. But you know what? Let's hear it for DJ Wheat. For DJ Wheat. And let's hear for day nine. For day nine, I'm DJ Wheats. I'm day nine. Don't go anywhere. More action here at MLG Columbus for the rest of the evening and tomorrow on Sunday.